Hi, this is Brett Lonsdale from Lightning Tools, and I'm here to show you today a new product from Lightning Tools, which is actually free of charge, uh, and that is known as Lightning Filters. So Lightning Filters is an SPFX client-side web part, which you can use against any custom web parts that you develop uh, with inside uh, the SharePoint framework, uh, the con consumer connection. Uh, but first of all, let's show you what this web part can do. So uh, what you will see on the page is one of our uh, products, which is known as the Lightning Conductor. And the Lightning Conductor here can actually consume from other web parts, uh, environment variables, such as query string parameters and current user and things like that. Uh, but what we want to do is also provide a filter web part uh, that uh, we can connect to to in order to, uh, to consume a connection of sorts. So what we're going to do first of all is click on to edit, put the uh, the page into edit mode, and uh, we're going to add the lightning filter web part onto the page here. So uh, as you can see, when we do a search, there's uh, lightning filters, so we'll drop that onto the page. Now notice that it defaults to this slider control, uh, but what we're going to do is just click onto the edit web part link. And in the panel here on the right hand side, you'll see that there are different types of filters that we can provide, different types of filter controls that we can provide as a uh, filter provider. So uh, we have this number filter, which gives us uh, the ability to choose a slider uh, or just a single field where you can enter the value that you want to provide as the, uh, the connecting value. Uh, we also have a, a straightforward text filter and we have a date filter and that date filter can either be just a single date or it can also be a date range uh, so uh, between uh, two dates and we've also got a choice filter where you can go through and manage what choices you want and that will become a combo box where you can select the value uh, from a list of choices um, or we've also got a people filter control as well that you can use and uh, we can have a default to the current user uh, we can also provide um, a lookup using a people control uh, to the consuming web part as well so um, we'll have a little uh, demo of, of each of these and uh, show you how uh, each one uh, can work uh, so what I want to uh, start off doing is using just the straightforward sort of choice filter and we'll do that with the task status column uh, so I'm going to change this to a choice filter and we'll uh, manage my choices. So in here we can provide two different values. So we could have uh, the actual uh, underlying text um, plus a filter of all value. So almost like a, a lookup code if we wanted to. But I'm just going to keep this simple and have uh, just a couple in here called in progress. And uh, we can add uh, another one as well. And that other one is going to be completed. Okay, so we might want this to say something like completed tasks or, or something like that, but actually provide, uh, so we could have a more descriptive uh, filterable uh, text that's displayed, uh, and then the filterable value is the actual value that's passed along uh, to the web part. So uh, we'll add those two as two different choices. Now, how we connect it um, will obviously depend on how you implement that inside your own uh, client side web part, but let me show you how we've done it with the Lightning Conductor. So uh, we're going to uh, bring up the Lightning Conductor uh, properties. Uh, so we'll uh, bring up the pane here and I'll configure my view. And we're going to go across to the columns tab here. And under the task status, I'm going to add a filter. And that filter, uh, notice that we could just simply go through and choose one of the values already um, that uh, the task may be set to. Uh, as, as a task status, uh, but that would obviously require coming in and changing uh, the properties of the web part each time we wanted to change a different task status filter. Uh, so what we're going to do is connect it instead to the filterable uh, web part. And the other, other advantage of this is the fact that you could have multiple web parts on the page or also providing or, or consuming a connection from the Lightning Filters client-side web part. So I'm going to uh, connect to the web part and in the drop down here inside the lightning conductor notice so we can connect to page environment variables um, or I can also connect to other web parts and this is where I'm going to select the lightning filters web part and here in the drop down um, I can get that filter filterable text or the filterable value so it's the filterable value that I'm going to select here and we we'll choose save save again and save again and uh, now we have uh, Obviously, uh, no content being aggregated. Um, so in the drop down here, we will go through and choose in progress. Now we can see all the in progress tasks. 
And if we uh, click the drop down again and choose completed, we can see all the completed tasks. OK, so that's kind of the first implementation of it. And of course, we could go in and we could manage more choices. We can show and hide the uh, label as well. So if we wanted to add a label to this, I can uh, please select a task status. Uh, then we could do that and that gets displayed so the users know what they're doing uh, when they're using the product. OK, so that's the uh, the, the first one there. Uh, so what we'll uh, also do is change here to a number filter. So we'll select the number filter. And for the number filter, I'm going to work with that on the percentage complete column. Now, the percentage complete uh, is actually a, uh, although it's displaying as 100 percent, uh, the actual underlying value here for 100% is one. So it works on decimal values. That's different if you use the lightning conductor to aggregate from something like planner tasks. Um, when you're using the Microsoft graph uh, to connect to, uh, to planner, uh, the actual maximum value is 100 uh, as opposed to one um, with inside a, a SharePoint task list. So just uh, be aware of the underlying values that you're working with. So in here, we've got, um, when we're selecting the number filter, we can have this slider control, or like I say, we can render it as a field, uh, and you've got the up and down arrows for the, uh, for the field there. Uh, so I'm gonna work with the slider control. Uh, we will show the value as opposed to hiding the value. Uh, it's just a neat little thing that you can turn on or off. Uh, the minimum value is gonna be zero. Uh, I don't think you can have a task that's negative of zero. Uh, we'll have a maximum value of one, uh, now, in here, what I want to do is increase the number of decimal places because we are working with decimals. So that, that allows me to implement, oh, sorry, work in uh, in step values of uh, obviously one. Um, but what I want to do is actually maybe change that to, uh, to 0.10 or something like that as my, my step value. OK, so uh, that's uh, configured. We've got the default value as well. Um, so now we'll go back into the lightning conductor and in the properties for the lightning conductor, I'm going to go to the columns tab and we'll take the percent complete, click onto the filter icon for that. And um, what we'll do is we'll have uh, less than or equal to and connect to the filter web part one more time. So we've got the filter value coming from there. Let's save this. And there we go. So uh, here we are on one. Uh, if we just bring that slider control down, you can see how we're we're reducing the number of tasks that we're displaying. Okay, so that's it working on the filter. So once again, uh, we'll go back uh, into the properties, and this time we're going to change it for the people filter, and I'm going to have a default. Uh, value of the current user. Okay, and what we're going to do is uh, just work with users. I'm not interested in working with SharePoint groups, security groups, or distribution lists for this example. So it's just uh, users. And you can see here that it has defaulted to me. Uh, so, so Lightning Tools. Now, where I'm going to use this one is actually a little bit different. Uh, what we've done so far is just work with some filters uh, on the columns. I'm going to work with some conditional formatting this time around. So uh, what we'll do is we'll go back into the properties of the Lightning Conductor, but this time I'm going to go to the Display tab. And on the Assigned to, I'm going to click onto Formatting. And I'm going to choose a little icon here just to um, present the current user. And we'll pick up the current theme color. OK, so um, we'll say assigned to uh, is like, just in case I'm one of many people inside the assigned to P, uh, field. And then we'll click onto that connector again. And uh, in here, we'll choose lightning filters and go down and select the title of the user. Here's the value that I'm going to work with. So uh, we'll save that. OK, and what I want to do actually is just clear the other filters so we can see some results. So let's just go and clear the percent complete and the task status filter. So we're bringing back all the content again. And as you can see, we've got the uh, current user with a bit of conditional formatting, and that is coming from the Lightning Filters web part. So if we were to add to that um, or remove one of the, uh, the other users, we could add uh, just demo 
user one set demo user one in there and here we go we've got all demo user one's uh, tasks are highlighted and uh, they'll be able to see the tasks that they have to complete okay so that's uh, applying the conditional formatting uh, through that one um, the last one that we'll take a look at is the date filter uh, so let's work with that and we'll set this to be a date range so the date range we can have a uh, minimum date and a, a maximum date so uh, we'll go through and uh, and set those I can obviously set like the minimum date being the beginning of the year and the maximum date being at the, at the end of the year and you won't be able to choose outside of that uh, so uh, we'll set this to exactly that okay so uh, so you can't choose outside of that range uh, basically and then we're going to go to the due date column so going into the panel again onto the due date we'll set a filter and I'm going to add another condition to the uh, lightning conductor filters um, and we'll have a, a greater than and a less than so rather than it working with um, the default of today's date what I'm going to do is one more time just select the filter date one and the filter date two okay so they are now connected uh, so we'll save this one so um, we haven't selected a date so let's go through and choose a date uh, we'll go back to the beginning of the year and maybe just select everything that we have in January okay and then we go these are the only tasks that were uh, were due in January okay so they are the uh, the types of filters that we can uh, we can provide uh, so uh, feel free to download this product and you can start using it against some of the custom web parts that you develop um, or of course you can also use it with the lightning conductor if you own a license of the lightning conductor okay many thanks